So I'm going to also not only give you good, hot stuff that I'm going to give you from whatever I believe the Lord has put upon my heart or what I think is good for my studies, but also I'm going to give you really good videos that I found that I think will be really impactful and helpful. So today, I want you to apply this to your life and listen to this upload. This is a phenomenal piece by a gentleman by the name of D.F., and he's talking about the different stages of Christian mysticism. Now, I know some of you may be like, oh, my God, what is mysticism? And, you know, what, how does that go with Christian? And is it spooky or what does that mean? Well, I want you to pay real good attention to it. Take some notes and we'll definitely dialogue about it later at another video. But I want you to listen to it and see if it's impactful or helpful in any way in your life. Be blessed. Enjoy. <laughs> You're listening to the Advanced Christianity Series. Today's topic, Stages of the Christian Mystic Experience. Stage 1. Seeking out the Lord, the Spirit, and God Himself. Something happens in the life of a person that leads them to seek out the things of Christ. Many times it requires that the person reaches rock bottom in their lives, possibly a brush with death, a suicide attempt, loss of a loved one, failure, any number of things to rock the boat of the comfort you have in your life, the bias you live in, the normalcy bias, where you begin to question life itself and what it all means. Other times, God will call you to come to Him and seek Him out. Initially, the ways that draw one to Christ are many, but the stages one goes through afterwards are all the same. For me personally, I was in love with a woman and it didn't work out between us. It was this loss of love and the realization of the impermanence of all things that the world provides, which led me into a deep depression, alcohol and drug abuse, and the inevitable contemplation of possible suicide. In my drunken stupor one night, while sitting in this deep, dark depression caused by the loss of love in my life, I sat there flipping a wax paper-wrapped razor blade across my fingers like a magician's coin trick. The blade was soon enough slid out of its wrapper, and in my ignorance, I began to consider the end of myself, the death of me. If I couldn't have her, my love, then what's the point? From somewhere deep within, that still small voice spoke to me, and told me to cry out to God, so I did. Father, if you exist wherever you are, I need you. Help me. I'm about to do something really stupid and there's no coming back from this. I need you in my life. This is my rock bottom and I seek you out. I spoke in tears and depression as I put aside the razor blade and went off into a deep sleep on my bed. The next day, an old friend whom I had a falling out with and hadn't spoken with for three years, called to see if I wanted to do some Bible studies and try out some churches as well. Wow, I exclaimed, as it seemed my prayer was answered. Just last night I cried out to God, and the very next day it seems my prayer was answered. I began to divulge last night's events to what would become my Bible study teacher over the next 14 months of my life. All this to say is that stage one is the initial motivating event. Knowledge, hitting rock bottom, or inner calling to seek out the Lord, the Spirit, and God Himself. This solidifies stage one. Stage two. Building your knowledge of the teachings of the Lord through the Bible and the mystics, monks, hermits, and saints of God. This next stage is for you to fill your heart and your mind with the teachings of Christ from the New Testament, as well as the teachings of all the mystics, monks, hermits, and saints of God. This helps you to become aware of your own ego and the old ways which, with which you have lived your life. It is the beginning of wisdom and transformation. The teachings are to be taken seriously and practiced, which leads to stage three. Stage three is putting the teachings to practice. This next stage means to practice praying, asking, seeking and knocking on God's door. It is a systematic approach to building your relationship not only with Christ, 
the Holy Spirit and God, but also with humanity in general as well as with yourself. For example, when Jesus was asked, what's the most important commandment? He replied, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first greatest commandment and the second is like it. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. So this bit of knowledge can be practiced fully, daily, and in every situation. For example, someone cuts you off in traffic, and the ego's usual reaction is anger and spiteful words towards that person. The correct view should be letting go and sending love. If there is some negative situation at work between two individuals that are near you or in your department, for example, just pray quietly in your heart and mind and send love to the situation in Christ. And you'll be surprised how many times these daunting negativities will diffuse themselves. Noticing that the ego causes divisions and separations based on religion, gender, age, nationalism, politics, and a vast array of other factors. The correct Christ-based view is to let go of divisions and separations and just love. Understanding that the cause of sin is based on the ego, the animal carnal-based instincts of the body the Adamic mind, the programming of the world that is infused into everyone causing them to live in ignorance, and the enemy on the spiritual plane, Satan and his demons. One can then understand all the things the average person is up against and the ignorance they live in, away from God, causes them to do what they do. When Christ was on a cross being crucified, he prayed to God to forgive his killers. Luke 23, 34, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. He understood that his killers and all those against him were operating from the ego carnal mind wrapped in worldly programming and brainwashing based on duality, division, separation, and egotism. But that within all those people and behind all the dross and disgustingness is also a soul, a heart, a person who simply needs a budge towards the Lord, the light, understanding, and love. While many of the practices are based on doing them, there's also the practices for being with God, surrendering to God, waiting on God, and various kinds of meditation and sitting practices based on past Christian mystics, monks, hermits, and saints who received the Holy Spirit, Christhood transformation, and eventual union with God. There are various ones to choose from, such as unknowing everything and waiting on God in unknowingness, like it is taught in the book, The Cloud of Unknowing. There is also the repetitions of the Jesus Prayer while focused on the heart, which disciplines the ego and creates space within for union with God, and various others taught by saints like Meister Eckhart, Gregory of Nyssa, the Desert Fathers, and many more. Stage 4. Water Baptism and Awakening to the Mystical Experiences After a certain amount of time is spent in stages 1 through 3, in stage 4 one is now fully prepared for water baptism, as was taught by John the Baptist and Jesus himself. For myself, my baptism came a full 14 months after completely saturating myself with the things of Christ, prayer, crying out, longing for God, and practicing stages 1 through 3 with all my heart, mind, and soul. The ritual of baptism represents the old you and all the things that go with it, the ego, the Adamic mind, animalistic carnal mind, worldly programming, duality, division, separation, vices, and sinning are all to be drowned under the water and forever killed. What emerges from the water is a new creation in God, a rebirth, a renewing, awakening to the things of God. After Jesus was baptized by John the Baptist is when Jesus began his 40 days in the wilderness. So you too, after your baptism, are to spend and remain in your own wilderness of further practice and renunciation of the old ways while waiting on God. It is during this period that grace will visit you and the Holy Spirit will fully indwell you, slaying off your ego in all the old ways and instilling in you the gifts of the Spirit. These gifts are the direct mystical experiences of God, many of which are like timelessness, the now, vastness, transcendence, divine ecstasy. Your whole body may be as on fire and in deep, mad love with God. 
the Spirit and Jesus. The inner light may illuminate your whole body in divine illumination, revealing to you how the ego operates in the inner kingdom of God. Your whole body being electric and filled with light reveals the inner spark of God in the heart, which is now accessible by you with further practice of going within and the Jesus prayer. It is at this point you can fully love your neighbors as you love yourself. There are a vast array of mystical experiences and awakenings that happen during this period, and you are being now fed no longer on milk of Christ, but on the meat, which are the divine inner revelations of the Spirit and God's grace. 1 John 2.27 But the anointing which ye have received of him abideth in you, and ye need not that any man teach you, but as the same anointing teacheth you of all things, and is truth, and is no lie, and even as it hath taught you, ye shall abide in him. So at this point you are now beyond faith, since faith is an assurance of things hoped for, and a conviction of things unseen. Instead, you now see that God and the Spirit are real, and that what Christ taught was truth. At this point, you no longer have a choice as you are directly living in and staring into the eyes of a spiritual reality all around you and in you. Stage 5 Further practice, purging, surrender, letting go. At this point, many of the heights of the mystical experiences can come to an end, tapering off into an equilibrium. However, the gifts of the Spirit remain as you live fully in God's timeless now, seeing the grand scheme of things is the perspective of the soul, as you no longer fall victim to petty arguments and the debates of the ego-based world. It is literally as if having one foot in this world and another in the spiritual. The only thing left now is to continue with the practices mentioned in stages one through three, although now, because of the infusion of grace, they are so much easier, Christ's yoke being light, you breeze through them in an all-pervading love and infinite patience with things. At this point, you further purge yourself of the things of the ego, Adamic mind, animal carnal mind. You deepen your practice of being with God, sitting in solitude and meditation. It does become a lonely and solitary path, but with you is Christ, the Spirit, God Himself, and the multitudes of angels and saints. The surrender and letting go of all things and of yourself also deepen with a whole new meaning as you give yourself fully to the things of God. Your being is given to the direct experiences and mysteries of the things of God. Stage 6 The dark night of the soul cometh. Eventually all mystical experiences go away and reach a very deep equilibrium an ever-present timeless now. It feels as if everything has left you, as if the spirit has gone away and God has left you as well. The purpose of the dark night is for a complete purging, washing away, letting go, and surrender of your whole being to God. The thoughts you have of God, Christ, and the spirit are only thoughts, mental projections of the ego mind. The idea and thought of God is not God himself. The idea and thought of Jesus is not Jesus himself. The idea and thought of the Spirit is not the Spirit itself. The idea and thought of who you take yourself to be is not who you are. The idea and thought of the world and all the things in it is not what the world and all things in it are. The ego mind deals in mental projections like illusions on a movie screen. These projections are merely representations and they are not real or reality. The Dark Knight is specifically designed to strip you of all of this illusion. All that is left is the real you, the observer, awareness. The you that existed as a newborn child did not think but merely observed and was aware. In the teachings of Christ, he exclaims, Matthew 18, 3-4, And he said, Truly I tell you, unless you change and become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, whoever takes the lowly position of this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. A child is in a state prior to any ego, prior to programming of the world,
prior to activation of the animalistic, carnal, Adamic mind. And in the dark night of the soul, you are taken back to the clean, empty state that you are prior to all things, as children are. If you realize this awareness, this observer that is you, then you will realize this awareness observer is prior to the mind and ego, prior to emotions and body. When there is no thought, the observer awareness that is you remains. When a new thought arrives, is seen, then passes, the observer awareness has remained throughout. If the ears hear, the observer awareness notices this. If the nose smells, the observer awareness notices this. If the eye see, the observer awareness notices this. If the hands touch, the observer awareness notices this. If the ego mind thinks, the observer awareness notices this. So in a dark night, one gives up the ego mind. One gives up hearing, touching, smelling, seeing, all thinking, and remains as the observer, as awareness, all the while in stillness, surrendering and letting go of all things outer, as the only way out of the dark night is to accept it, surrender into it, and let go of all things. Furthermore, what is this observer awareness that is you? Examine yourself as this, know yourself as this, find yourself as this. When you do the following, you will finally be free and loosened from the dross and heaviness of the outer shell that is the body with its five senses, the ego mind, and the Adamic, animalistic, carnal mind that has caused you so much grief in your life and on the path. The dark night itself can last anywhere from a few weeks to as long as decades, with the soul dipping in and out of this stage according to a number of factors. For myself, it lasted three plus years, and much of it still remains. To remind the soul of emptiness that exists in the pursuits of the ego and the whole worldly system. Stage 7, Union with God At this point, having gone through the dark night of the soul, you have literally let go of and surrendered everything there is, including the very self that you have taken yourself to be. All that is left is this deep surrender and letting go, until there is no more to surrender and let go of. Then even surrendering and letting go of are both surrendered and let go of. And it is at this point that you drop down and fall into the heart. When this happens is when union with the Father happens. My first glimpse of this was so profound, but mere seconds as the ego mind came back into the picture to exclaim, That's it! That's where and how union happened! That statement literally pulled me away from the union pulled me as the observer awareness out of the heart and back into the headspace, fully aware of the ego's proclamation. It may happen that union only does come in glimpses, as God presents himself as a lover, teasing you of his presence and hinting to you of where he is waiting. For some who are ripe, those souls come home to union, it may happen as something that lasts hours, days, weeks until you fall back into the headspace and out of union. Regardless, all that is left is to surrender and let go of everything, including all reactions to the union experience. It is as if you as awareness, observer, are like a drop of water, and God, waiting for you in the heart, is the infinite ocean that you fall into, the ultimate love. Where the ocean ends and the drop begins is not known in union. I will end here with this and also add that the union, when it does happen, carries with it further stages of deepening and love and selflessness and knowing directly God's will and visions and possible trips to the heavens when one leaves the temple that becomes the body and the body itself begins to transform in various ways to become a proper temple for the union with God and the spirit returns to remain fully with you and the union taking place in the body temple. Christhood takes shape as a living, breathing unity of permanence, of no you, but Christ in you. And you and the Father are one, and the Spirit indwells you. I want to add that by going through these stages as a, is as unique and as various as there are people. Some of these stages one can dwell in for as long as years, decades, to as short as a few weeks, months. But generally, between the mystics, monks, hermits, and saints of the faith, they seem to be in agreement of these stages taking place within a Christian mystic, albeit minor differences based on small details. 
It is recommended also to have a spiritual teacher that is a mystic monk or hermit of the faith who has themselves gone through the stages or at least up until the dark night. Usually a competent teacher can guide you into the stages that they themselves are currently at, including Union. However, to find one is to find one like this is usually few and far between. I myself was in correspondence with a hermit of the faith who lives in South Africa. I would write various questions to him for years while in the dark night, and he successfully guided me to a point of accepting the dark night and eventually moving forward beyond it and into my first glimpse of union and the heart. However, just knowing these stages in detail and putting them to practice is and can be enough to further one's walk with Christ into completion and union while here on earth. In the path of solitude and not finding a competent teacher, the spirit will guide one into union while the soul also studies all the writings left behind by others who are also completed and resting in union. I pray Christ, the spirit, and God lead you to the experiential truth in union with God and as a selfless saint and living example in this world filled with illusions, duality, and darkness. In Jesus' name, amen. You deserve my praise.